our interns so that they could share their experience with you as well. Um, it's our SAVE internship program. It stands for Student Assistance for Education. Now, basically that program, what we use it for is to help students kind of get experience to help them decide, you know, what they want to further their, their future or what they want to go into. Um, we provide college financial assistance, mentoring, hands-on learning experiences through a summer employment opportunity. They get paid hourly, and their scholarship at the end of the two-year commitment is $2,500. I'm sorry, $5,000. I run five different internship programs, so i got to get this right now. Um, where do our interns work? This is just a small list. Every year, we have a little over 50 interns throughout the company. Um, they range from you know, juniors all the way to college. And so just depending on their interest, that's where we place them. Also, depending on mentor availability. These students, they don't just have one mentor. They usually have maybe about three, four, how many did you all have? Three. Three? Yeah. So they're getting knowledge from all sorts of you know, different people. So I was asked, what do you look for in an intern? Well, you know, we get, they have to have good grades, they have to be part of different activities, but some of the things that, you know, we don't want to talk about are, you know, takes initiative, works hard, asks a lot of questions, observant, can take advice, open to opportunity, and when it comes to their course study, it just depends on what they go into. Some of our interns, they start off wanting to be a mechanical engineer, but then all of a sudden they discover a different path and they end up wanting to be an INC technician. You know, it just depends. Our students, when they apply, most of them, they really don't know what they want. They just say, okay, hey, engineer. But do you know how many branches of engineering there are? So, this summer, we're starting something new with them. We're doing a rotation piece with our new interns. Just to kind of help them validate their career path. You know, they spend so much time in one area, and then all of a sudden they decide they want to go into another. We want to give them that opportunity. You know, we want to expose them to the different areas that we have. So just to kind of help them, you know, decide where they want to go. And so, these are the branches of study that we support for that CPS Energy. <coughs> so when I was doing my research and I was looking at all the degrees that our employees have, I was like, oh my god, what is that? You know? Uh, there's some like, um, I guess it was e-commerce. I guess that's wrong. Electronic. Oh, okay. Yeah, electronic commerce. What is that? You know, I thought, hmm. But, I mean, putting it out there, gives the student an opportunity to research and decide if they would like to kind of go into that department for a little while. Now, here's the part that I'm hoping you all will kind of appreciate. So, being a teacher for over 13 years, when I started at CPS Energy, you know, I don't know if you all thought this as well, electricity, just a, just a switch and that's it, right? <laughs> Well, that's what I thought. And having met the different employees, I discovered there's so much more, but there's so much information that I could not take it all in at once. And being that I'm a hands-on learner, and I had all these other events that I had to coordinate, I figured, well, we have a middle school event coming up. How are these employees going to teach electricity? How it gets from one place to another? So I challenged some of our engineers. I said, you know, I need you all to come up with an activity that teaches energy distribution. And so right away they thought, oh, we're going to talk. I said, no, 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 you're not talking. It has to be hands-on. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah, it's like all of a sudden it turned into, okay, we have to have a department meeting. we got to bring in the VP, our directors. And, I'll, we'll walk through this, okay? So, um, 
I, and, and, you know, connecting with that, with our interns, you know, being teachers, you know, our students, they don't all learn the same way. So we need to provide them with different ways of learning what it is so that, you know, they understand, okay, this is what they do. Do I want to go into that or not? So our interns, they learn through experience, hands-on experience. We also have a site program, but that is a partnership through Alamo Academies, and those are students who go into technical fields. This student right here, Eric Herrera, he started off as an aerospace major. Discovered that, no, nah, that's not really what I want to go into. And so now he's over at Waco studying to be an instrumentation controls technician. Just I mean, completely way on the other side. But because we exposed him to those opportunities, we exposed him to what they do. I mean, hands on, he's there checking, you know, the water to make sure that the water is at its purest because of the turbine engines. Now, don't ask me any more about how it works because I don't know that part. That's what he told me. So, we also have students that work in our various areas of IT. Now, it can be from installing programs to going to various departments and switching out equipment to, you know, uh, launching all the new cell phones that need to go out for our system operators. I mean, these kids, hands-on. And some of them, you know, there's days where we're shorthanded and if it's a new intern, oh, here, you have to go in and do this. They're like, what? But, you know, hey. We're all there to help each other. We support them. We give them the help that they need so that they can be successful. But it's hands-on. Law. Who knew? We have, we have lawyers. Yeah. I know some of you knew that. But we also have a location in Austin. And for our interns that attend school out in Austin, if they're wanting to go into law, then we've got a department there. And they're very involved. Um, they do all sorts of research for our attorneys, and they enjoy it. And as a matter of fact, one of, uh, as a matter of fact, this young lady was going to become a, she wanted to be a mechanical engineer. Oh, she switched. She's now wanting to be an attorney. <coughs> numbers. Okay, so accounting, you know, it's numbers. This student, um, he is going on his fourth year of an internship, and he is over at UTSA studying to be an accountant. He's doing all sorts of projects with our other accountants, and boy, oh, talk about numbers. Sometimes I don't even understand what. But he gets it, and he enjoys it, and that's what we're all about to provide them the opportunity so that they can validate where they want to go. We have our mechanical engineers, our electrical engineers. Now, <clears throat> these two students, as part of their <coughs> exit, for their internship, they had to teach all the other engineers at the power plant about energy distribution. So, you know, during their 10 weeks internship, you know, they're learning the different processes. But at the end, our engineers want to know, well, how much did you learn? Can you teach that back to me? And so that's exactly what they're doing, and they did pretty well. So as I said, you know, our interns, they become teachers as well. You know, that reinforces what they learned. And as you know, it's really important that, you know, once they come in and they learn something, we want to be sure that it sticks with them. And so during the summer, when we do have our interns for 10 weeks or so, we get them to teach some classes like, you know, the Elmo STEM Teacher Workforce Coalition. And they create their own activities, and they're the ones that do the teaching. Well, I how many of y'all are familiar with Core Force and Expo? The Spanish Chamber? Okay. So it's an event that the Hispanic Chamber holds every November. And they get companies from all over San Antonio to have some sort of hands-on activity with maybe about 2,000 middle school students. <coughs> So these students rotate through different stations, and they learn what the <coughs> does, and it's all STEM-based. And so one of our interns, he taught the most simplified version of how to calculate your electric bill. And boy, it, I got it. I understand it now. It's no art bill, a bunch of numbers, forget it. Yeah, this was easy. 
So, <clears throat> there's times when they have to do their end project that I ask them, you know, get a little creative. You know, yeah, I get the whole PowerPoint business, but you know, what can you do? What can you bring to show us what you've learned? So, Hi, I'm Mike at Xavier's Behind the Camera, and we are here at the Green Mountain facility. We're the only two safe in here at Green Mountain. And um, we wanted to sum up our experiences in a little bit uh, that we're entitled to interns in the wild. We have Michael putting on his PPE, two interns, one facility. This is Interns in the Wild, Green Mountain edition. <laughs> <laughs> this is all about survival. And in this year's job, safety is part of it. One of the users is that all the electricity. It's very easy to get hurt. So, that way you can do it. Interesting. Now, we're going to a wall where there are dinosaurs. We'll have ancient years. These are all analog years that are going to soon be replaced with the brand new AMI users.
but also the tactical and their diligent work and commitment of effort. All the students, from those in the field environment to those in the office space, are extremely intelligent and hold a great potential to be more than just a filled spot, but also a meaningful facet of the people's company that is CPS. Now, continuing by my initial experience, I arrived in the Navarro building and was cordially greeted. A group of about six candidates, including myself, were escorted into a room where we sat and momentarily paused as we were interrogated. We all watched and waited as Ms. Carrington. Ms. Karen Sanders looked over our documentation and hastily filled out paperwork and whatnot. Surely each of us were thinking about what we were going to say in our heads. But nonetheless, we were all suddenly recovered to reality when out of the blue, Karen stopped completely, took a few minutes to look at each one of us as her eyes pan across the table. And um, you just kind of wondered what she was going to say next. Um, but another realm of reality was broken when she simply smiled and asked us, are you nervous? The faces of the young men and women that encompassed me seemed to agree with the statement, which prompted her to say, well, you should be. You really shouldn't be. Everything will go fine. So instantly, there was a certain peace that involved their own reassurance. In light of the presence of teachers and instructors here today, I speak on behalf of every student in saying that the ability to instill reassurance into a student with such high potential is one of the most appreciated and valuable facets of a remarkable teacher. Cultivating the gifts of individuals truly does give birth to a world of possibilities, scientific and otherwise. So walking towards the parking lot of the building, I felt pretty well set after my interview, and about a month later, I got the call that I had been accepted, and they were looking for a mentor that matched my career interest. It was finalized that I would be under the mentorship of Mr. James Trevino, the Director of Grid Support at his team. The world of science and mathematics is so incredibly vast and constantly expanding that to sum it up in a matter of minutes is impossible. The progression of the STEM industry is not only something that so deeply intrigues me, but also something that pays to get into. Data analytics in one hand and STEM-related research in the other are the driving forces for the top companies and universities in 2016. Um, an applicable portion, uh, talking about the data analytics and STEM research, of my internship uh, was in a log that I compiled over the summer. And I kind of talked about some of the things that I did um, over the span of about three months. And um, it serves to me as a body of work that I developed within myself. Um, and it's a large aspect of ingenuity. The work, that I, the work I conducted included a wide variety of problem solving, note taking, research, and discipline. The premise of the work was based within the grid support engineering and project management departments at CPS Energy. Um, the focus of the work was San Antonio's Smart Grid Initiative, in which I participated in troubleshooting, implementation, and improvisation of smart grid meters. Um, like you saw in the video, some of the old meters are being replaced more towards the center of the town, but we're trying to move towards the uh, outskirts of the meters. Um, aside from the software programs I worked with, I also had the pleasure of working with the mechanics of the meter as well as with data processing and the physical aspect of the team from customer communications. like going out into the field and things like that. So this experience served as a rare opportunity to work in a real world setting and contribute useful research at a collegiate level. As for an application of correlating the STEM related work I particularly this summer to the real world, there's a lot to say. That being said, I've highlighted a few examples for the purpose of a quick explanation. Um, one of the first issues I encountered was the arrival of a router about the size of a car tire uh, to the shop. The uh, router, which was part of the mesh network that transmitted signals across the antenna, had fallen due to a car accident hitting the pole in which it was situated. In order to resolve the issue, a decision had to be made between reinstalling or relocating the MIU. Uh, this kind of taught me some things about how to deal with customers and the mean side of customers as well, but <laughs> the, the reality is you have to work in the a professional, at a professional level to ensure that everything just gets done. Uh, scientifically, scientifically speaking, <coughs> we also utilize the formula stop calculus in your classrooms to measure electrical waveforms and voltage patterns by comparing them to trigonometric sinusoidal waves. We created formulas to facilitate calculations and simulated power outages in order to ensure functional operation in failure situations. So some of the things we reviewed were things like electrical hindrance, um, electrical impedance, 
um, the ratios between the voltage and the current and uh, alternating current and stuff like that. Uh, we talked about the statistical correlation that can be obtained through data um, using stuff like Gaussian curves and the bell curve and standard deviations to graph the temperatures that the meter was uh, capturing and sending back to the head of the system, which was called uh, UIQ. We also used a uh, frequency polygon to graphical device for understanding the shapes and distribution of data sets. And along with these things and more, it was, it was truly a great experience to have worked with CPS and uh, having that opportunity that many people don't have. But now, speaking of the real world, there was much that I learned during my internship outside of the spectrum of work-related activities. I had the pleasure of meeting with several great individuals, including Danny Kinshola, who worked in the Tech Metering Operations Services Unit of CPS Energy. Being under the mentorship of Director James Trevino was truly a blessing, but also pushed me to work with his team members as he was many times busy. Danny exposed me to more than just ins and outs of the job, but also the inner workings of the company by exemplifying the work ethic and an uplifting persona that I've yet to encounter again in everyday life. He, alongside fulfilling his daily work requirements, was pursuing a higher, a higher education degree <coughs> at the University of Incarnate. This means that they worked towards excellence daily in the office, but also off clock, and ensuring that he was also ensuring that he always had something to make him stand up from the rest. Then he showed me that by action, when faced with a difficult task or unfamiliar environment, you should hit the ground running and educate yourself. Then he taught me that your appeal in the STEM field or any field really is cultivated by your ability to never stop growing, to continue to pursue educational excellence. Something that people of my age group fail to understand most of the time is the importance of punctuality in the workplace. The importance of depicting an image of accountability and stability. This is not an easy process to replicate, but it proves very useful in the scope of the real world. It takes time to understand company culture, but it's also extremely important to know what, what you're doing and why you're doing it, especially as an engineer. I observed and participated in most days every day in an environment of speculation, people asking you your stance on something and why. Now, not only do you look like a fool if you don't know what you're talking about or what you're doing, but if you're not adding anything to the progression of the company or industry, then you're just filling another seat. So it's a valuable lesson to be learned, but also a one. I was asked by Ms. Christina to speak for about 10 minutes on the topic of why would I ever need to use this in the real world. Um, at first I was a little shocked, I'm not going to lie. Uh, today is a school day, so... To speak for 15 minutes on, uh, as a public speech is, is really quite a daunting fact. It kind of feels like a state of reunion for us. <laughs> it's a long time, it feels like for it. But as I contemplated on what I wanted to get across, one thing stuck out to me more than anything else. Prospective middle school and high school students must remember this one thing. In a constantly evolving world of technology and, in and innovation, the importance of strong work ethic, whether it be in an isolated or an interactive environment, is vital, yes. But something that must not be lost is the unique creativity of each individual and their respective potential to dramatically affect the world at large. Whether it be in business, in science, in math, in technology, or fine arts, each has an exclusive ability to impact, to impact the market, <coughs> to add a growing realm of education. Education is an investment. Tell them to master the craft, to prioritize, to prioritize, to make logical assertions, and to work together to synthesize the future. That's what engineers do. They take intangible ideas and create concrete realities. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> uh, my name is Bill James, and I'm a senior at Johnson High School. And I'd like to preface this with, I'm, I'm very excited for this, because I'm that kid that loves somebody else's classes. Don't teach the STEM related fields. I love that. I've always loved that. I've always been that nerdy kid that does that. Um, we have a unique perspective because I'm not going to pretend I'm an expert in anything STEM related. Not yet, at least. That's the plan in the future. But me and Ezra have a very unique perspective of this because we're at that level right now where we can experience the real world at CPS. That's a, that's a real job that we have. But we're also in high school and we're about to go to college. Um, I'm in the fall, I'm going to be at Rice University uh, studying nanoengineering and material science. So 
about as separately as it gets. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm in high school and I'm taking the classes that y'all teach, or have, I've taken them in the last few years. And so the first thing I can preface this with is my, uh, my mom's a teacher, so I can, I can appreciate how much time goes into it, so thank y'all for that. And what y'all do really does matter. It's, it's, it's huge. Having a really good science teacher, a really good math teacher, someone that can really influence you, can really make a difference in a kid's life. Uh, I've had the best math teacher in sixth grade. I had her sixth, seventh, eighth grade. And she made me love math. And without that, I don't know if I'd be doing any sort of engineering. So keep up the great work, first of all. Uh, it's, it, it's more important than you think. Uh, as far as why would I ever need to use this? It's STEM related fields. I mean, we, we kind of use that in what runs the world. Everything that makes things go is STEM related. Uh, at CPS, I'm in the residential development section, so every time a new neighborhood is put in, it needs energy somehow. Someone needs to go in and set up that energy grid and figure out how the, all the houses are going to get power. That's all science in that. Uh, I worked a little bit in design and worked a lot more in the design of it this summer. But you have to figure out how you can get energy from your biggest power lines that can't go into houses, have smaller ones, have smaller ones, then underground, and then turns that into the energy that goes into your actual houses. It's a lot of science, it's a lot of math. And it's a lot of creativity too, because you have to really work it. Uh, but what y'all teach has a real solid foundation in what we do. The same applies not only in going to a job, but going into college. Uh, if I didn't have great teachers teaching me my sciences and my maths now, there's no way I'd be able to survive at any university, more or less, or right to study engineering. So that, that basis in the sciences and the maths at the high school and the middle school level, it, it sets a real foundation for the future. Also, if y'all have kids that are really good at science and math, definitely try to get them to uh, apply for this when they're juniors. <coughs> Because it is a great opportunity to just further that, and you get that real world. You get to figure out that you actually do need to use it. It makes you appreciate it a lot more. So if you have those kids, get them in this kind of program. If you can get an internship, any sort of thing where you're using your studies in the real world before you're at college, while you still have time to really appreciate what you're learning, do it. Because it's, it's inexplicable how important it is. The, the sciences and maths, those are very underappreciated because we're all nerds, right? Yeah. <laughs> but we make everything go. We make everything run, and it's thanks to the, the groundwork set by y'all, and that's more than important. Uh, I'll end this with just real quick thank you, first of all, and just keep teaching what you're teaching because you're making a difference in these kids' lives. And teaching them the maths, the sciences, it, it's, it's huge. It really is. These kids are going to appreciate it. They might not appreciate it now. They might dread your class and homework. But in three years, four years, five years from their college and their job, your kids that grow up to be engineers, your kids that grow up to be accountants, scientists, all those fun things that you can do, there's so many. And they're using what you taught them. They'll appreciate you. Thank you. Summer, I get really excited because you know, we've got a whole new group that comes in and you just never know what you're going to get. And you know, you just kind of wait and see and wait. And then all of a sudden, everything just starts coming out. Um, you know, these kids, when they come on board, they're shy. They don't know what they're doing. And so, not only are they learning about a field that they might go into, but it also gives us a chance to kind of teach them the soft skills, you know. Um, kind of give them direction, you know, it, and, and all of that combined is really important. So, as part of our SAVE program, you know, like I said, we, we accept applications starting in November. The deadline for this opportunity is February 19th. Um, and so, I'm going to leave my card. So, if y'all are interested and want more information about it, please email me, text me, call me, whatever. You know, um, that's how I communicate with them. So I gotta, you know, be up to date with all that. Um, do y'all have any questions? Mm -hmm.